how to read knitting and the anatomy of all common and uncommon knitting stitches. Mark my words, if there was one video I think every knitter should watch, then this would be it. Knowing how knitting stitches actually work, what they look like and how to read them is such a fundamental skill. And speaking from experience, even a lot of advanced knitters barely know half of it. It's going to help you following a pattern a lot more easily because you can tell at a glance where you are. It's going to help you identifying mistakes and it will also help you fixing them. Ultimately, it will also make grafting, knitting stitches and even inventing your own stitches a breeze. So without further ado, let's dive right into it and show you how to read knitting. But this video comes with a little challenge. I want you to comment right now and tell me how long it took you to figure out that knit and purl stitches are mirror inverted copies. 10 years, two years, or maybe just now. And of course, like this video right now to support my work. Let's start with the knit stitch the way you never may have seen it before. A knit stitch is a simple loop you pull through another loop. You go in from the front and pull a loop through. And that way you can stack loops upon each other and the result will be a more or less secure stitch that some say looks a bit like a V. Of course you are doing this multiple times in a row once for each little loop and in that manner you construct your knitted fabric. And then these V's are maybe a bit harder to see but they are still here. See all those little V's and if you zoom in even closer you can see how each little V is connected with a little strand or bar in between. And this is very important. All these V's here are connected. For example if I here on this swatch I yank out a, a stitch. I can basically mess up my whole knitting. But since all these stitches are connected I can also use this knowledge to uh, fix my knitting again. So I can redistribute this slack here towards the adjacent stitches. Come on like so. So uh, I, every little stitch gets a bit of that extra slack. Let's go uh, maybe one more time in the other direction. See I always go into each leg of the little V and then I stretch things out good as new. So this process can be used to fix little holes or gaps in your knitting very very easily. And you probably also know that you can use these little strands to fix a dropped stitch. So uh, same as before you always pull a loop through a loop and in that manner you fix your knitting. Here back to normal. For a purl stitch you do the exact opposite. Instead of pulling a loop through the front you come in from behind and pull a little loop through. Come in from behind and pull a little loop through and the result will be a loop that have these little bumps here at their base, a little purl. And if you do this a couple of times in a row you create this kind of fabric with all these little bumps. A single purl stitch consists of a loop. Here's our loop and it forms a little bump here at the top. It's pressed to the front. And if you follow that loop all the way to the end it goes down here. It is connected to the next loop here via this little uh, bump or bar here again. So it's always a loop, top 
pearl bump here that is shaped a bit like a dome and then followed by a bottom pearl bump that is shaped a bit like a, a cup. So uh, a pearl stitch traces this kind of meandering line and of course you can use this to redistribute slack ac evenly across the row. If you turn a purl stitch, so here we have a purl stitch with the bump here at its base. If you turn it around, it will look exactly like a knit stitch with the V here. Frequently you hear that purl stitches were bigger and that explains tension imbalances, but that is of course very misleading. They, instead, they are mirror inverted. And if you think about it, for a knit stitch, the, you hold the yarn here in the back and then you enter from left to right to knit. And for a purl stitch, the yarn is in front and you enter from right to left. So the exact opposite way. It just happens that the knitting direction and the way you hold your yarn makes one a bit more difficult, just like driving backwards, I guess. To prove this, you can actually knit backwards. So instead of purling like this, I can turn my work around and then start knitting in the other direction. So this is how you would do it with the yarn held in the left hand, a bit cumbersome with these huge tapers, but the result will be the exact same knit stitch or rather pearl stitch here. I have a full video on um, mirror knitting here on my channel. I link it to you up in here in case you are interested. Now I quickly want to take a close up look at a full knit stitch again. So here we have one knit stitch and it starts here with this strand in between two stitches. Then it comes in from behind. Then there is the actual loop forming the stitch and it goes out coming from the front over to the next stitch in from behind loop out uh, through the front. Once you understand this, grafting will be a breeze. So let's say we want to graft these two pieces together. Here's our knit stitch. So we go in coming from behind. Then we move over to the other side. And I already started this graft. So here we have one incomplete knit stitch. We went in or I went in from behind. So this means I need to go out through the front. Then you need to move over to the adjacent stitch and go in from behind. Here we already went through that stitch. So go out through the front, find the adjacent stitch, come in from behind, move over, go out through the front, come in from behind, go out through the front, come in from behind. And that's already the whole secret to grafting stitches. And of course you can also graft purl stitches as long as you remember that for purl stitch you need to come in from the front and get out coming from behind. In from the front and out from behind. And in that manner you can graft purl stitches or really just any other knitting stitch pattern you like. And yes, even brioche stitches. Now knit and purl stitches are the two basic stitches, but they have twisted counterparts. So instead of pulling the yarn through like this, as you would for a knit stitch, you can also twist the stitch and then pull through. Twist and pull through. On the knitting needles, this is achieved by knitting through the back loop. See what is happening when I insert my knitting needle into a stitch through the back loop. See, there is the twisted loop. This means I could also manually twist a stitch like so, and then knit it the regular way. But I guess knitting a stitch through the back loop is a bit easier. And the result will be stitches that look a bit like a half finished X or a, well, I don't know, twisted V. See the difference here? We have a normal knit stitch with this V and this is almost like an 
X. A lot of beginners accidentally twist their purl stitches because they wrap the yarn around the needle clockwise instead of counterclockwise. So if your knitting looks like this, always a row of V's and then a row of these uh, half X's, then you may have to adjust your technique. By twisting a stitch, you actually use more yarn. So this is a normal loop and now I twist it. See the difference? Normal, twisted. This effect can be used to shorten fabric or knit fantastic Bavarian twisted stitches. I'll link you my full tutorial up in here in case you are interested. And here's one tip. You can fix a twisted stitch on the needle by knitting it through the back loop. So a normal knit stitch, so like this, is mounted on the needles in a way that it starts here in the back, then goes over and ends here in front. And then you knit that. And here is the twisted stitch. So it starts in front, goes over and ends here in the back. And what you can do is you can knit that stitch through the back loop and the result will be a balanced normal knit stitch. This effect is used in combination knitting where you end up with a lot of twisted purl stitches. So let's take a look at twisted purl stitches. Again, you create a purl stitch by pulling the yarn through like this. But of course, you can also twist the loop and then pull through. Twist the loop and then pull through. On the knitting needles, this can be achieved by going in through the back loop and purling the stitch that way. So again, you twist the loop by going in through the back loop. You could of course also do it manually like so and then purl would be the exact same thing. Another way uh, to achieve this is by wrapping the yarn around the needle clockwise. So like this. This will also result in twisted purl stitches but where is the difference? So when you knit through the back loop you manipulate an existing stitch. So you twist that and then you pull the yarn through. This loop here is twisted, this one here is balanced. And when you pull around uh, through counterclockwise, you don't affect the loop one row below. This here is still balanced. The only difference is that this loop here, the currently active stitch, this one ends up being twisted. So that's the difference. Either way, the result will be twisted purl stitches that look like this. It's actually very, very difficult to see a twisted purl stitch because they almost look exactly like a normal purl stitch. That's because the loop that gets twisted here, it's usually hidden here in between. Now you can see the twisted purl, uh, the loop. Here we have the balanced purl and here the twisted, but usually you don't see this. It's only here on the right side, or in this case, this would be the wrong side or the other side where you can see those twisted V's or half X's. So just like knit and purl stitches are mirror inverted, knit through the back loop and purl through the back loop are essentially the exact same stitch, just worked from the other side. So let's take a look at this swatch to sum up what we learned so far. A knit stitch can be identified by, by those little V's here stacked upon each other quite neatly. A purl stitch always has a top and a bottom purl bump, a top bump and a bottom bump. Twisted stitches, knit stitches on the other hand, they appear a bit like excess, half excess. And a twisted purl stitch is very difficult to identify. It is maybe a bit more condensed than a normal uh, purl stitch, but you can truly only see it when you turn things around and then they will appear like twisted knit stitches. And when it comes to more complicated patterns, here, well, what's this? So here is a V followed by a top and a purl bump, then another V. So knit purl, this is a one by one rib stitch. And here is a twisted knit stitch followed by a rather condensed uh, purl stitch, twisted knit stitch, condensed purl stitch. So this is a twisted uh, rib stitch and if you turn things around you can see those twisted uh, purl stitches a bit better. 
but what about more difficult stitches? Well, there are increases and decreases and let's start with decreases as they are a bit easier. In knitting you don't have any loose ends. So you, all you can ever do is pull a loop through a loop and stack them upon each other the way I showed you before. And this is very important because uh, a decrease means combining two stitches into one. And the only way to do this is by pulling a loop through two stitches at the same time. So it can be either the right stitch that ends up laying on top or the left loop here ends up on top. And if it's this, this left loop here, this left loop, then the right loop is a bit hidden. So the resulting stitch is defined by this left loop here and it will appear to lean towards the right. And this stitch is known as knit two together. So you have two stitches on the needle and you start with the leftmost stitch. See, you start with the leftmost stitch and then pull the loop through. See how the resulting stitch appears to lean towards the right. And if the rightmost stitch lays on top, the result will be a left leaning decrease. Now the knitting direction is from right to left. So to achieve this on the needles, you want to enter this stitch first and then this. You have to change the order of the stitches and you could do this with a cable needle, but there's a shortcut. You can knit these two stitches through the back loop. So when I enter these two stitches through the back loop, see what is happening. I am changing the order of these stitches and then you could knit them together the regular way. But here is one problem. If you knit stitches through the back loop, you are also twisting them as I have shown you before and the result will be a twisted base stitch. I hope you can see this well. Here you can see the X very clearly. But remember how I also said that you can untwist twisted stitches by knitting them through the back loop. And that's how SSK slip slip knit the most popular left leaning decrease in knitting works. So first you twist these stitches by slipping them knitwise. See how they are mounted on the knitting needles the wrong way. They start in the front and end in the back and not the way normal knit stitches do. And then when you knit these two stitches through the back loop, you are changing the order and you are untwisting them again. So see how you end up with a nice balanced V. Here you end up with an X. So every time you knit an SSK, you are changing the order of stitches. You are twisting them and untwisting them. Quite amazing, isn't it? You might wonder if you can do the same with a right leaning decrease, meaning a twisted base stitch. Of course, you can slip these stitches twisted before you knit them together. So you slip one stitch purlwise, this is going to be hidden anyway, and then slip one stitch through the back loop. Then slip them back to the left needle and then knit them together. And the result will be a twisted uh, right leaning decrease. See how this stitch is twisted, eh? the legs cross each other. This is known as knit two together twisted and it can be used in Bavarian twisted stitch patterns. So in front of me is a swatch with all four decreases. This is knit two together, very invisible and difficult to spot, but you can see how this V here covers the one below and then there's only one and it's clearly leaning towards the right. This is the twisted counterpart and you can see how this stitch here is a bit twisted. Then we have SSK here and you can see how it leans towards the left with a balanced knit V here. And this is the twisted counterpart knit two together through the back loop. And I hope you can see how it is twisted a bit in this direction. Both are rather loose. That's a problem with all left leaning decreases. If you want to fix that problem, I recommend watching my video on the best left leaning decreases. I link it to you up in here. 
Another way to approach a decrease is saying you are actually knitting one stitch. So you knit one stitch and then you pass the second stitch over the one you just knitted and the result will be the exact same knit two together. So it's the exact same thing and basically you are just deconstructing the technique. So instead of pulling a loop through both stitches, you pull it through one and then you pass the second loop over but the result will be the exact same right leaning decrease or knit two together. This effect is often used in bind off techniques, but it can also come in handy when you knit, need to knit two together here at the very end of a needle and it's too difficult to work it the regular way. And this effect can also be used to decrease multiple times. So you knit one stitch here in the middle and then you pass this stitch over. Then you slip the remaining stitch back to the left needle, pass this stitch over, slip back, pass this stitch over, slip back and pass this stitch over. And the result will be a very, very fast decrease. And actually this technique is used for brioche decreases. So you have one base stitch here as an anchor and then you pass stitches across this or over this anchor from either side. But what about increases? How do these work and how do you read them? Well, remember how I said a knit stitch is simply pulling a loop through another loop. And an increase is basically nothing else but finding a spare loop anywhere in your knitting where you can pull through an additional loop. Let's take a look. So the easiest way to do this is by simply creating a spare loop by wrapping the yarn around the knitting needles. This is known as a yarn over. And if you knit across, you will create a big eyelet often used in lace knitting. You can close the eyelet a bit by knitting it through the back loop. So remember how I showed you how uh, knitting something twisted takes away a bit of the slack. So when you come across the uh, yarn over in the next round or row, you purl it through the back loop and the result will be a smaller eyelet. As an alternative, you can also use a backward loop increase for the exact same outcome. So before we did a yarn over, then we knitted a stitch. And then in the next round, we twisted our little yarn over here to create a twisted loop that is much smaller. What you can do instead is you can use a backward loop increase. So you basically cast on this twisted stitch right from the start and the result will be such a small eyelet in both cases. See if I knit across you get this small little eyelet with a twisted stitch here. If you want it even smaller then we have to look to the row below. So a yarn over like this one basically does nothing else but extending the strand between two stitches here. Um, so see how this is connected and this slack here creates the eyelet. So the problem with a yarn over is that this strand is just so long and that's why you end up with a hole. So why not make use of an existing strand that is much shorter? Then this increase is known as make one. So you pick up the strand between two stitches and then you knit it and the result will be an eyelet that is much smaller because this little strand here or this stitch can only steal so much uh, yarn from the adjacent stitches. But what if that's still too long? Well, you can lift the little strand here, but then you knit it twisted to take away even further slack. And then it will be known as make one right. But I hope you can see how all these techniques, all these different um, increases are essentially the same technique. You create or use a bit of slack here between two stitches and then you either knit it through the back loop or keep it that way if you want a nice eyelet.
So here is a little swatch and I hope it will illustrate this uh, relation very well. So this is a yarn over. Here we have make one. This is a backward loop increase and this is make one right. So if you want it big, you elongate the strand between two stitches by wrapping extra yarn around the needles. If you want it small, you make use of an existing strand and steal yarn from the adjacent stitches. And if you want it smaller yet, you knit the strand twisted or cast on uh, the strand twisted. But remember how I said an increase is simply using whatever loop you find. Well, instead of using the strand between two stitches as a base for an additional stitch, you can of course use an existing stitch. There is your loop here, so why not go into it twice? But the problem is if you do this, you end up, well, this looks oddly familiar like a yarn over and you would end up with a big eyelid. So what's the solution? Well, you go into the loop twice, but the second time you go in through the back loop. This, is, this increase is known as knit front and back. So the result will be two loops, but there's also this little well, pearl bump or bar. And this is why this increase is also known as bar increase. But what if you don't want this bar? Well, again, we need to look into the row below because here, that loop here, it isn't connected to the working yarn directly anymore. So when we lift that back to the left needle and knit it, that's not a problem. So the result will be two more or less balanced stitches here without a bar. And then this increase is known as knit right loop. But again, it's essentially the same increase. So you can achieve the almost identical increase by knitting into the loop and then slipping this second loop, only slipping it to the right needle. Then this increase is known as knit front slip back. Again, just like the difference between a backward loop increase and a make one right is the time you actually work the increase. So if you take a look at the swatch here, we have KFB and in a sea of stock and knit stitch, it's very noticeable, this little bar or pro bar. This is KLL in it is barely noticeable. And here we have KFSB, so knit front slip back. And I hope you can see that this will result in the exact same uh, increase. The only difference is that you need to pay attention when to work the increase. So what can we do with this knowledge? First of all, I hope this will enable you to read your knitting. Here we have the little lace shawl I'm wearing today. And sadly I didn't find, I mean, many people ask me for the pattern and sadly I didn't find the time yet, but maybe you can work it out yourself. Let's deconstruct the pattern together. Here we seem to have a selvage stitch and it covers two rows. Then there is a knit stitch V here, followed by a pearl bump, followed by a knit stitch V and another pearl bump and another V here. So it appears to be knit, pearl, knit, pearl, knit. Then there is an eyelet here. So this means yarn over. And then we have one, two, three, four, five knit stitches. And then there is this slanting line here. And if you look closely, it slants towards the right. The V's here are balanced, which means, and it covers another stitch here below C. Those, they cover a knit stitch below. And this means knit two together. The next row, it doesn't cover a stitch. So it's knit two together followed by a knit stitch. Then there's eyelets. Again, uh, right slanting line, knit two together, eyelet, knit two together, eyelet. And then we have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 knit stitches and so on. So when you know how the stitches appear, you can basically read and recreate any pattern. You can also use this knowledge to graft advanced stitches. For example, maybe you want to graft an SSK. So SSK means combining two stitches and this loop here needs to be on top. And then you pick up your tapestry needle, go in from behind, out through the front, 
obviously you would have to probably have to do something up in here and there is your SSK and maybe you want to follow up with a make one here's the little strand between two stitches you come in from behind create a loop out through the front and there is your SSK followed by make one easy as that Another fun application, you can invent stitches. For example, you want a right-leaning twisted double decrease. I doubt you can find this decrease in a knitting book, but let's invent it together. So right-leaning twisted means this third stitch here needs to lay on top. So we start with a simple knit stitch, pass this over, slip this stitch over, and now we need to uh, twist this stitch, so get this out of the way slip this through the back loop, slip back, pass over and there is our twisted right leaning double decrease. Now there are probably 10 different ways to achieve the same stitch. This was just to illustrate that knitting decreases are no big secret or science. They are actually very simple and you can more or less make them up yourself as you go if you understand how things work. And the same applies to increases. For example, you can use something as a loop a couple of rows below. So maybe this stitch here. So we go in, I grab the loop, then I knit a stitch. And then I go into the same loop. Oops. One more time, grab a loop, knit one stitch. Then I grab the loop again knit one stitch and so on and the result will be something that almost looks a bit like a daisy stitch. So this is the way this increase would look like one row later. Isn't this pretty? Let's go back to my living room and sum things up. For me knitting means creativity and I feel that only if you understand the basic mechanics behind a knit and a pull stitch will you be able to unleash it. And I sincerely hope that this video helped you understanding your knitting and the way it works a little bit better. So make sure to like this video if you enjoyed watching, comment with your questions and your feedback. And of course, don't forget to subscribe in case you don't want to miss any new videos. Happy knitting and enjoy the rest of your day.